Hi, I'm Elise Yang from Elise Yang Arts. I'm a food artist here today at Art Resin headquarters. I'm going to show you and share with you some of my process for Flow Art, uh, the Dutch pour. This is a 24 by 36 wood panel that we'll be working on. And over here, I have my black base. All my paints are mixed with just water, um, anywhere from 30 to 50%. If you go more than that, it might break up the binding agents and you just want to use very good quality paints for this. So I have my black base here. I have my titanium white, a few different metallics, and then some uh, bright colors here. I have my magenta, my red violet, and um, sky blue, a couple of different blues, Windsor blue as well, and a Prussian blue. We've just mixed all our paints um, and we wanna test out the consistencies, which is very important in a Dutch pour, regardless of the pouring medium you're using, just to make sure that everything's going to flow evenly. So over here, I have my black base that's just mixed with water. And I'm just gonna put a little round blob and then there we go so I'm just going to test a couple of colors here we have red violet sky blue sky blue is an opaque color so it's it does get a little thick and sometimes requires a little bit more water I have a metallic here and then titanium white which that's a little too much okay so then it's just on a piece of paper we're going to flip it, tilt it, and see how it flows. So based on this, I can tell my white is the thinnest and my red violet and my gold will need a little bit more water and maybe a little bit more water in the base and, and we're ready to go. All right, so our gold needs a little bit of water to thin out, just a touch. So I'm gonna open up my bottle and just put a little bit of distilled water um, and then give it a good shake. And the blue, sky blue is fine. And then just adding a touch more water in my base. The base you really definitely want it to be the perfect consistency because it's gonna carry out all your paint as you blow it out. Give it a good stir. And then you just wanna recheck your consistencies after you've added some water to it. And you can even let it run off of your stick and then it just leaves a trace for just a couple of seconds and then you know you're good and it's running off the stick very nice okay i think we're ready to go so we've got all our paints mixed the consistencies are perfect and before we start painting i just wanted to show you how i've prepped my canvas this is going to be resin so it's always great to use a gallery wood panel this is 24 by 36 and i've used painter's paint to just tape off the bottom and I like using or placing my canvas on a spinner. The spinner is from Jessica Winstrom. She's a fluid artist and made this. Um, and it's great for me to access the painting from any angle, just making sure I have all my edges covered. So yeah, we'll get started. So I'm going to step up onto a stool just so I have a better angle and view of my painting. So we're gonna start laying down our black base. And I should mention that I've ensured that this is leveled because you definitely wanna make sure it's leveled so the paint does not tilt as it's drying. Um, all right, so I've laid that down. I'm using my blow dryer. I'm using my blow dryer to just spread this paint around. Okay, here we go. So as I'm blowing the base out, and I like using my blow dryer to do this, I can get a sense of the consistency of the base and I can see how well it's moving. So I know the consistency is just right. And make sure you have your blow dryer setting set on cool and that your hair dryer has that setting. Otherwise, the heat will change the consistency of the paint as well. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm just going to touch up the edges um, to make sure that's all covered. And then we're gonna need to uh, torch this to just get rid of any uh, bubbles that's here. And that looks good. I think we've got everything. So you can see why a spinner <laughs> comes in handy. All right, so I'm just gonna grab my torch and just run it over. And you can see all the bubbles pop in. Now the base is, has nicely covered the canvas. We've got our edges and I'm going to start layering my colors. Um, so you wanna be mindful about this. So I'm gonna start with uh, a dark blue and you're going to be mindful of your um, composition. So this is a Prussian blue. Um, Prussian blue goes really well with red violet so I'm going to do that next. And as a mix this will create kind of like a purple. Okay. Now, this would be a good time to add a metallic. I'm gonna use a copper, and as you add metallics and you play around with different um, transparency of paints, that's what's gonna give you, if you like a little bit of cell um, details in your flow art, that's what's gonna give you those details. So we have a bit of copper, and at this point, um, titanium white, which is an opaque, uh, is also good. Just a little bit, not too much. I will be adding that again later. And then I'm gonna get going with my blues. So I've got one of my favorite blues. This is a Windsor blue. I'm gonna be very liberal with this. And you can see at the edges I'm adding a little bit more paint. Okay, um, and then sky blue, which is, looks really nice also. And then I'm gonna be a little liberal here, and then the edges. Okay, um, and let's add our white again. And next will be uh, two, two different golds that I'm using. So I'm gonna start with, so again, we're doing another metallic at the very end and this will just sink to the bottom, creating some cell uh, detail, so. All right, so that's a darker gold and then I'm just gonna go with a bit of light gold. Okay, and then just a little bit of white again. Just some drops. Okay, so once you have that down, um, you want to just flood around these colors with some of your base so that it gives some consistency for the paint to be blown out. So you, you really got to consider what composition you want. Um, so I do want it to blow out a little bit there, not too much in the center. And then I want to blow it out in and around this area a little bit. Okay, that might be a bit much, but that's okay. And then a little bit here. Okay. Now I'm gonna move this out of the way. Um, last thing you wanna do, you can see there's bubbles in here, so we wanna torch that out. Just a, just a quick torch. We're gonna pull out our blow dryer, and again, you wanna make sure you have it on your cool setting, and unlike the time when I'm blowing out the base, you wanna have it at a gentler um, 
low, lower setting in terms of the way it's blowing out. So I'm going to get started and first thing I'm gonna do is blow over my base, over the colors a little bit. Okay, here we go. Torch it one more time. You can already see. Okay. All right, so we're gonna blow this paint out. As you're blowing out your paint during in your Dutch pour, you can either the direction of the blow dryer can come into play. Um, you can either blow it straight across horizontally to create more of a continuous flow. If you wanted more um, of a fanned out look, you can blow it kind of more of a perpendicular angle or a combination of both. Okay, you can see <laughs> where my blow dryer just uh, dug into the painting, but that's okay, we can touch that up. So once you've blown it out, you want to just take a good look at it, see what you like, what you don't like, and we can always um, modify it a little bit. So I, I like the way it's covered the canvas. I think the colors are really showing through. Um, yeah, I, I, I might define the edges a little bit here. It, it, you can, it can just be on a little bit of on your table even, and you can take um, a little bit of that and just do this sort of thing. And then, okay, so there's, so you want it, sometimes in the black it gets lost, the colors get a little muted out. So here as well. I'm just blowing it out a little bit. Just so it doesn't look forced. Okay, so next I think um, we're ready to just kind of add some details with with the torch. So also I'm, look, I'm seeing here, it looks like there's a concentration of paint there. So I might try and blow that out as well. Or I might just actually take my spatula, put some of that gold on there, and just kind of zhuzh it a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to torch certain areas and you'll see the surface kind of break apart right here. I can see there might be a little bit of detailing there. Um, some details there and that here. And as you torch it, you can see cells popping up as well. So depending on what you like, um, you can do more or, or just keep it minimal. Thank you. 
It's almost almost like shading and adding with with your torch. So I think um, I think I'm happy with that. I think I'm I'm finished fiddling with this piece. I, I've added some details. I like how how that um, metallic pops and all the, against the black. What I'm most happy with is the vibrancy of the, of the colors really show through. And um, there's just enough detailings which we brought out with the torch. Um, and I'm ready to let this dry. So we're just gonna make sure it's leveled. Make sure you cover your piece um, so it dries evenly without cracking. And it should take about three to four weeks to fully cure before you're ready to resin your piece. So as the other two pieces are drying, I wanted to show you the resin process. So I've gone ahead and prepared two pieces, my Dutch pour and my cell art that have fully cured. You really want to give it at least three to four weeks to fully cure. And as you can see, they once dried, it's completely flat and smooth. And when we put that resin on, you're gonna see the colors pop. So let's go mix some resin and get started. So now we're ready to resin. I have my 24 by 36 panel here. And for that size, I'm going to need 30 ounces of resin, which you can calculate on the art resin calculator. And so that means 15 ounces of the hardener and 15 ounces of the resin. And that's why volume, not weight. So I'm going to go ahead and it doesn't matter whether you start with the hardener or the resin. I'm going to start with the hardener. So I'm going to need 15 ounces. I have my measuring cup here. And I'm going to pour that in. So this is a 32 ounce kit. So I'm probably going to need almost all of this bottle. All right. Yeah, 15 ounces of the hardener. And I'm going to mix in the resin the equal amount and you really want to make sure you have the exact one-to-one -one ratio of each um it's great to just have these in a hot bath a warm bath i should say water bath to keep the resin um, to avoid air bubbles as much to minimize them as much as possible Okay, so now we have a 30 ounces of resin. I'm just gonna use my wooden stick here to mix it for three minutes. So you wanna be nice and um, gentle about stirring this, not too vigorous, as it'll incorporate a lot of bubbles. And as I'm doing this, I wanna just go along the sides and make sure I'm scraping that in so everything, the hardener and the resin is incorporated evenly and you're going to start to notice that it's cloudy right now but it'll you'll see that it just turns clear okay so it's been three minutes and everything's incorporated but just to be extra sure when you're doing a big batch i mean this is medium size i would just transfer this to another up and I, I will scrape everything and what I'm gonna do is just continue mixing it all in here just to make sure everything on the bottom has been mixed okay and, and we're ready to go okay so all of our resin is mixed edges are finished and varnished and taped off before I resin and so let's go so, okay, let me just stand on my stool so I can get a good angle visual. All right, so here we go. So I'm just pouring as close to the canvas as possible to avoid creating as any air bubbles. I'm just gonna keep a little extra in here for a sec. Um, when you're working on a larger piece, it's good to have a good scraper so it doesn't take you too, too long. And so I'm moving this just across, spreading the resin across, and I can already see all the colors, especially that gold popping, and it looks great. So you have uh, 45 minutes or so working time. And you move nice and nice and easy. And then after, 
words. I'll work on the edges. So I'm just kind of dragging it to the edge and just scraping it. And then I'm just going to use, don't scrape it, but you can drizzle um, any spots that need a little extra and it's usually the edges for me. All right, so I love this part as I can already see, especially on this dark base, the colors just coming to life and it looks so smooth, clean. If there's any texture in your piece, it's completely evened out. I do have my torch. As you can see, there's a lot of air bubbles. Not too much, but we're gonna use our torch to pop them up. And the other thing you wanna look out for are little dust particles. So, and if you see any, um, you can use something like a toothpick to just scoop them out. So I'm just, I see one already here. And then maybe in another five, 10 minutes, I'll give it another, I'll just go over it with the torch again to just get rid of the bubbles. I see a bunch forming here. I think that's good. Um, All right, so I've got my pieces covered for the night. Um, so we're gonna let it cure for about 24 hours and I can't wait to show you the big reveal once it's cured. Okay, we're back. It's been 24 hours and I'm back here at Art Resin headquarters ready to take a look at these pieces that's been resined. So here we go, we're gonna lift up the covers. So everything looks so clean, it just, gives your art pieces that professional finish. I love the way this turned out. So we have a little bit more work to do before we can put this up. Um, I'm going to start removing the edges, uh, the tape off of the edges. And because I've already finished it and varnished it, it should be an ease taking this off. And that's it. Looks great, nice and smooth, and I can't wait to hang it up.